All right, hey guys, what's going on today? Here is Fat Matt. Today we're gonna do episode number seven of COD Zombies Unpopular Opinions. This episode is gonna be Black Ops 1, and we have our special guest this week, which is Greg FDS. I think he's that way. What's going on, guys? So, Thanks for having me, Matt. No problem, thanks for coming on. But um, some of these opinions are crazy. Like, BO1 is like one of my favorite Zombies experiences, because it's like the last one we got that was like truly like bare bones. Kind of just like classic style zombies. But um, without further ado, we'll get into the first opinion. So we have Luke or Toxity saying, BO1 is the best zombies experience. For a zombies game, it's well balanced with storyline, gameplay, and it revolutionized zombies to what it is today. Now, this one is interesting because everything he said is right, but I can't call it the best experience because everything after it is better besides BO4 in my opinion. I agree that after Black Ops 1 is good, but at the same time, like I think zombies wouldn't be as popular today if we didn't have black ops one because exactly. i feel like that was like a pivotal game it was a perfect game to get people into the series uh i think kino is the most played zombies map of all time probably yeah, that's like where everyone started i feel like everyone started with that it seems like so i feel like he's definitely right as far as storyline we didn't really get too much storyline stuff like it was very very low it but was... it was still enough that like people were interested but it like didn't go overboard like it did with the other games yeah so i can understand that and the gameplay was just pretty basic but it was so simple that you could hop on basically any map and still like understand what's going on pretty much exactly Whereas when you get into like the other stuff like i don't know transit or whatever like people couldn't even find pack a punch that's what i'm saying you know like I mean? they ended bo1 on like a perfect note with blowing up the earth but I feel like they just completely mishandled the story in BO2 to where it's like so complicated to understand because they started the multiverse. Like, I don't know. Well, yeah. And they have so many different crews happening as well. It was. Uh, which definitely didn't lend itself. They literally could have just picked up off of the moon. Like, they could have just been like, all right, Earth's blown up. What do we do now? But whatever. And then the next one is Crazy Rabbit. He just says BO1 is the best zombies. That just goes hand in hand with what Toxity just said. I, I definitely think that's unpopular. Like, I agree with these being unpopular opinions, but I can't give BO1 the best zombies ever. I just can't. I don't have that in my soul. I mean, Crazy Rabbit's been a guy that's been around the community for a long yeah. time. So I can definitely understand what he's coming from because he's been pretty much hardcore playing zombies since Black Ops 1. Exactly. When getting to round 50, like, which was his original, like, really popular series yeah, back was, like, kind of his thing, you know? Well, so I can definitely understand that. Whenever he's streaming, I feel like it's always like Black Ops 1, like around 50 attempts or something like that. I don't know. Black yeah. Ops 1, I just feel like it's his game. So this is a total fair opinion. Yeah. I just For him, <sighs> I can understand. But I think for most people in the community, it's an unpopular opinion. Yeah, exactly. So the next one is Expert Fusion saying, Kino just isn't fun anymore. It was the greatest thing ever in 2010, 2011, but now it's just plain boring. Map location's boring. Layout's boring. Everything is boring. I completely agree with this. Yeah, like, me too. Back in the day, it, I loved it. It's so, it's so overrated. Like, oh man, it definitely is. Like, you can, like back in the day, of course, everyone loved it because it was so easy. You could just have a good time and it was really simple. You didn't have to worry about doing any Easter eggs or anything. Exactly. You literally link the teleporter and then there's three moon rocks to play 115. And that's literally the whole map. It's like the best starting map ever. It's like easy and like, at the time, the location, everything was really cool. And I kind of just like the vibe of Kino because like during the day, zombies maps are kind of just different. Like, yeah. I don't, it was always just really cool. Well, it was originally supposed to be DLC 4. Yeah, yeah. World at War as well. So that's kind of why it was so simple, I think. Exactly. And it says like under that, there was a reply that I left and it said literally a worse to in every way, except the one weapon isn't broken. Like, I would agree that Kino is literally just a downgrade of Darice. They literally just took the Darice formula. But I don't understand how they have less content on Kino. And, like, because... Would you say Darice has more content than Kino? Not really. I mean, it's the same thing, really. There's two more teleporters. I mean, there's two more I teleporters, <laughs> but let's be real here. Like, I don't I don't think I've ever used two of the teleporters. Like, the only one no. I ever use is by the catwalk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If I even used it, you know? I, I wouldn't really say it has less content. But it's like, about the same, yeah. It's Yeah, I mean, you have, like, Nova Crawlers and stuff like that, but at least on Kino, the Thunder Gun sometimes does not work, but, like, the Wonder Waff, you lose Chubb. 
Yeah, the Wonder Waff's always been broken. I oh. like I love the Wonder Waff, but I feel like it's always been pretty broken. It's, like it just dude, doesn't work. Honestly, <laughs> the Wonder Waff is overrated. It's so over dude, in the giant, it's like do you remember do you remember like launch week of BO3 when it literally just didn't work? It like killed it, one zombie. It, it, it like made crawlers. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a joke. It was literally the worst. And yep. <laughs> this next unpopular opinion is probably my favorite one of this episode because I wholeheartedly agree with it. I'm pretty sure Greg doesn't at all, but Context Hampton says Call of the Dead is hot trash and Moon is S tier. I hate Moon, so I don't agree with the Moon part, but I don't like Call of the Dead. I always thought it was so overrated. Nope. The, see, that is a wrong opinion. And it's is, okay it's wrong, but... It happens. It uh, happens. Okay. Moon is overrated, of course. I don't I think like it. I, I personally think it's a fairly difficult map. Up to that point, it was probably the hardest map. Uh, just because, like... I don't know. I, I just don't enjoy Moon that much. Like, obviously, the Easter egg was cool, and seeing Samantha and switching souls and all that was cool. The Easter egg was fairly good. Probably the best Easter egg up to that point. Yeah. But the reason I think Call of the Dead is so good is because it has the first solo Easter egg, which is really easy. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to do co-op, you have a lot more steps to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, obviously, the scavenger is not that great once you get to, like, the 30s yeah exactly. the vr 11 is not really that good either but i mean you can shoot your teammates they turn red and get an insta kill and zombie that's cool i think like, a lot of people don't know that a lot of people don't know that yeah and i feel like george being on the map was very annoying but like it's a good reward when you kill him you get a free perk yeah exactly you can't really go wrong with that and the fact that i did the rainbow perk challenge on call of the dead i saw that yeah you know that ago. took me a month so i played this map for a month straight pretty much and i just got the easter egg world record too yeah that's I really crazy enjoy See, the map that makes me feel like terrible and like ignorant because i would say i hate call of the dead because the water and like freezing is annoying george is annoying the fog's annoying and call of the dead just feels like it's out to get you like i just it's so hard to me well that's that's one of the things that's so good about it in my yeah. opinion like like the fact that it's not easy mm -hmm. you know like when you compare like say call of the dead and kino like, Kino, you can just hop on and play, whereas on Call of the Dead, you actually have to, like, learn the map a little bit and get good at it. And it does take, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve. You I have think... to go all the way to the bottom of the ship to get jugged and, like, stuff like that, which does take a little bit of time to learn everything. I think Call of the Dead is, like, the first complex map. Like, it's nothing crazy, but everything up to that was really easy. Because Ascension... Well, yeah. Ascension, yeah. Kino, and the World at War maps was just super basic, and then Call of Dead added the element of Forge, and... Is there a moving path? Yeah, it, it, it moves around, right? <laughs> yeah, the lighthouse, light on tag. Yeah, I'm a noob when it comes to Call of the Dead. I, just really I mean, that see, and that's, that's the reason. You don't give it a chance. Now I'm getting exposed like, in my own video. don't give it a chance, <laughs> man. I like Tag, though. Tag, however you say it. I thought Tag was cool. All right, Call of the Dead's always going to be my favorite Black Ops 1 map. And that I don't think that will ever change. That's I, I literally just got a poster right you there. got You got something with the of the dead maps. That's what it is. Call it the might, dead, honestly, mob of the dead. It might be, but I don't like blood of the dead, so. I love blood. I mean, this is not a video about blood, but I'll defend blood till the day I die. <laughs> okay, I don't we'll, care. we'll save that for another time. All right, we will, we will. So the next unpopular opinion comes from my friend Eager Beaver. He says, the most annoying title in the Black Ops series. Every map has something incredibly annoying. Kino has Nova Crawlers, 5 has the Pentagon Thief, Ascension has Space Monkeys, Call of the Dead has George, Shangri-La has the Screechers and the Napalms, and Shang at overall just literally wants you to die with the Spike Trap, the Mud, everything. And then Moon has the Spaceman and Excavators, and he says BO1 is just annoying all around. That was a lot, but that's good. That's a good point. Think, think about it though. All of those things made every single map different. Yeah, it added in the a unique good way. Thing. And that's what I really like. Obviously, a lot of those things are really annoying, but some of them rewarded you greatly. Like, for yeah. example, the Pentagon Thief. Obviously, you can pack a bunch for a thousand points if you kill him before him killing you. Just get Mustang and Sally's or something. Mm. Uh, the Space Monkeys. Yes, they're annoying, but you get a free perk if they don't hit your perks. Uh, Pentagon Thief, you get Bonfire Sailor. I, I might have already said that. Mm. Um, obviously, George, you get a perk. The napalms and creatures are very annoying, but <laughs> the monkeys, safe. the monkeys on Shang, I mean, oh, I you can also get a free perk if yeah. you get a max ammo. 
Uh, the spaceman is so annoying. The only good thing about the spaceman is when you moonwalk. Yeah, and, like, exactly. glitches out. And uh, other than that, I can agree with everything else. The excavators are probably the worst thing about Black Ops 1. But I, I do think, like, we, we sometimes don't appreciate black ops one for all the different stuff that had I feel no like. now that i'm like just making this video and thinking about it all the maps are so different like yeah. it's truly diverse yeah and it follows a linear story black ops one is probably the most underappreciated zombies game but probably I, yeah. is there a way like solo you're playing ascension can you get that free perk i feel like they're just too spread out like i feel like if i'm playing solo ascension like that's just not gonna okay happen. so one thing you can do is you can just not open the jug area and you can also buy quick revive two times or three times so then the quick revive machine is gone oh that's smart so they that's can't 200 take iq it. and then they can't take jug if you don't open it and then i mean you can you can turn on traps in different areas and that usually can help out um True, i I, I usually just like the only perk i usually buy is popper and then uh -huh. i just like stay there and like whop the monkeys yeah no that's smart because if you don't open like half the map they, they don't got shit to go they can't well there's <laughs> there's another strat that you can do if you get jug where you know like as you go down to the rocket and there's that like fire trap right there yeah yeah if you stay on the other side of the fire trap like right i guess before the stairs that go up to mule kick uh -huh. and speed you can kill like four zombies that are or monkeys that are going to go up the stairs and once you kill those you can just make your way to like the other side of the map and you won't have like the only monkeys that will go up there are the ones that spawn behind the fire trap okay. as long as you turn the fire trap on no monkeys are going to go through it because they'll die so you just turn the fire trap on then haul ass but like well, PhD. You, you have to you have to first kill the other uh monkeys that are on that side but then you can because you don't have oh, to worry yeah, about it. Oh yeah, because they're gonna be running through. Okay. Yeah, and if you have jug, you can just go through the fire trap and not die. And then yeah, there's another fire trap on the other side near stamina, but that's the only one perk that's there. So, you know, it's it's pretty easy to cover them all. But yeah, because I'm saying I mean, theoretically, if you just like only have PhD open and you just get free perks every round, you could just stack them up, right? Well, yeah, but eventually, like, if you're, I don't know, doing, like, if you want to open Pack Punch, <laughs> you will have to open the Stamina Up side. And that's all that true. Too. But at the same time, like, that's what high round players do. I learned that from watching high round players. Dude, high round players are actually really smart. I feel like they're, they're yeah, the underappreciated side of the community. They grind. Like, they all of them. Yeah, like, they know so much more than, like, I do about the game. Like, you can literally learn so much just from watching them play the game. Yeah, same with speedrunners, you know I mean? too, though. Have you seen really Bladen cool. doing, like, the jumps on Origins to, like, grab the lightning? Yeah. Like, that's, I, that, that stuff's so that's cool. That's insane. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> if you would have asked me that, like, two years ago, I would have never... I would have laughed at you. I'd be like, you can't yeah. just do some trick shot and it's not ride crazy, the tank. Dude. We've been playing them out since 2013, and then this year, Seven it finds years. out you can skip you can just not use the tank and just get up there by a straight jump. I'm surprised we're getting a little off topic. I'm surprised at how like crazy the BO2 origin solo record has gotten. Cause I remember like three years ago yeah. when I was trying to run it, it was like, just do it. You just, you have like a good strat, but nothing crazy. Now there's all these shortcuts and like getting the ice staff really late. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the next unpopular opinion is by Kyle Farmer. He says, BO1 is an overall better experience than BO2. BO2 is a pretty big divide between good and bad maps, while BO1 is pretty consistent quality in all six original maps. That's pretty straightforward. But I still think BO2 is better. Me too. Like, I don't know, BO1 has better, I don't know how to explain it. It has a good map layout, but BO2 just has that insane, like you have transit, which is pretty bad. Like, objectively speaking, then Die Rise is pretty bad, Nuke Towns, whatever. And then Mob of the Dead, like, best map of all time. Then you have Buried, which is, like, pretty average. I would say Buried's good. Buried's good. And yeah. then Origins is another greatest map of all time. Like, that's crazy. How do you have the worst map ever and two of the best maps ever in one? Yeah. I mean, like, literally, I think Black Ops 2 is what really got me, like, really into zombies. Yeah, that's what I... Like, Whereas Black Ops 1 didn't fully capture that for me. Like... I started in World at War, I beat the campaign, and then played Nox. And I got all the DLCs and I enjoyed the maps, but I didn't go out of my way to play them like I did in Black Ops 2. So that might be my opinion, but obviously like Transit and Die Rise didn't really get me into it either. Yeah, like exactly. That, you know what I mean? So, I, re I remember when those maps came out, 
because I was a kid and I just always loved COD Zombies. Like, I really liked Die Rise. I didn't like Transit at all. But I was kind of just like, what's happening? And then Mob came out and I was like super, super hooked. Like, I feel like no one looks back at BO1 and says like, that is my favorite Zombies map of all time. Like for any of those maps. Well, there's still like high round players that only play Black Ops 1 and yeah. they play it religiously. And for them, like those are the people that I can really understand why mm -hmm. they like it so much because they literally play it so much. And I can understand, like, I wouldn't, this is kind of an unpopular opinion for it being the best overall, but at the same time, like, you can understand where people are coming from. When I can totally see it. It's like a, it all comes down to just like opinion and your taste in zombies. I prefer more like yeah. crazy shit, gobble gums, Easter eggs. I'm more of like a storyline person, but I could see for like yeah. high rounders and stuff, BO1 being the best game. <laughs> yeah, cause it's, it, it really is bare bones. It's challenging. Yeah. You still have the two hit and all that stuff that's why i think black ops 2 is the best because it's like a mixture of like difficulty and also you have the uh, you have blundell and jimmy Zelinsky. Map. yeah so it's like the best of everything combined you have that like black ops 2 just has that aesthetic like the hud the cult like i don't something about in the perk the logos the, yeah like uh, bo2 is just like it's just perfect. Like I, it's, right, we need to stop going off on. How we do. I. This is what. The, is. Oh my god. Okay. This is literally happening. <laughs> like Black Ops is the best game. <laughs> Bo2 is good. We're over it. Okay. Next one. Hot Dog Water says five is the best map in the game. Unpopular, definitely. I would say five. is a good map, man. No, five is my second favorite. But I'm saying most of the community, I feel like, hates five for the most part. A lot of people don't give it a chance, and that's. Like, it really is a hard, hard map. And like, when I got sick of Kino back in the day, I would play five because it was so much more difficult and it was way more fun. And plus the crew, like JFK is awesome. That's what I'm saying. Nixon's annoying. But uh, other than that, I like, I just feel like five was such a good map and it's not appreciated enough. Um, but you know, it, it definitely felt different. And like the Pentagon Thief, just get Mustang and Salas and you kill him every time. Yeah. and. Five, I think, was the first map that was vertical. Like, there's three different layers. And I think that's such a cool, like, dynamic to have to a map. And then, like, the war room is a beautiful training spot. The basement is just, like, freaky and it's cool. And then the winter's howl, even though it's kind of trash, it's still one it, of the it coolest. It's one of the coolest that's, wonder weapons ever. a good ever. idea. At, at first, before we had the ice staff and all this other crazy stuff. At the time, yeah. I loved it. I thought it was yeah. so, so cool. It's definitely unique. And I, yeah. I think five is a really good map, but I can understand why people would think that's an unpopular opinion. Definitely. So uh, the second to last one, we have Blade saying Ascension is trash. He's just straight up about it. Now, I think it's unpopular. Ascension is my favorite map in the entire game. I don't know if he did this to troll me because my tier list. <laughs> See, I can agree uh, with this one, I think because it really if you think about it is literally dirty only you ride lunar landers now the good thing about ascension is the two new perks so you get phd which is like my favorite perk and then stamina up which is another good one so i think the only thing going for ascension is the perks and that's pretty much it what the, you, you just... already have the thunder gun which was in kino already and other than that you just have the lunar landers i just had a revelation you saying it's pretty much just the Reese just opened my eyes so much. That's crazy. It, it literally I never is ever Reese. thought about it like that. What if the Lunar Landers are teleporters? It's literally the same thing. You just broke my brain. <laughs> Wait a minute. I guess so. Where does Ascension rank in BO1 for you? Like if you had to rank all the BO1 maps for it. So I'd go Call the Dead. Five. Probably Ascension next, though. That's fair. Because, <laughs> like, I don't I don't really like Shang and Moon that much. But, like, Moon is okay. Like, I, I can play it if I have to. And then Kino is just, you know, kind of boring. My thing with that, okay, right? Moon? Just... Sorry, you talk. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're good at this, you know? So, <laughs> Moon in BO1 is, like, a 5 out of 10 experience. In Black Ops 3, it's like an 8. I think Black Ops 3 yeah, made that map no, so it, much better. It's the best Chronicles map, I think, okay. as far as remakes go. Yeah, no, okay. I'm glad we agree on that. Because I'm like, Moon, yeah. BO1, and BO3 are they're the same map, but they're so different. Like, aesthetically, gameplay-wise, Gobblegums, I actually think, really help Moon. 
makes it more yeah. fun. But um, we have the final unpopular opinion. We have Tim Hansen saying the HK21 be slept on. Now, I don't like the HK21. I don't think it's slept on. I'm an RPK type of person when it comes to Black Ops 1. What's your opinion on this? <laughs> okay, I think the HK is really, really good. The, I mean, high damage, low rate of fire. It's good when you pack a bunch of two. RPK shoots faster and runs out of ammo faster. If you get double tap with the HK, it's better than the RPK though. Dude, there's something about the HK-21 just like sitting like at Jug on Kino, just unloading it. Like it just sounds like a tank. It's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. like you know, like it, it just feels, feels pretty it bad. It feels like you're using like the MG-42 or like a World at War, like big heavy gun that's just like, doo -doo 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 yeah, exactly. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's like you're time. literally yeah. shooting a tank. I'm always going to prefer the RPK though. It's just like the way well, you- the RPK was way better in Black Ops 3 yeah. than Black Ops 1. So I think the HK is a better overall LMG. So you agree with the HK-21? In, Bla in Black on? Ops 1. In Black Ops 1, yeah. Okay. Like, I thought the HK was really original. I would love to see it again. I would too. Dude, BO5. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the questions. Um, okay. Do you have any opinions on BO5 or what you think is going to happen in it before we close this video off? Dude, I just... I, I would not mind a lot of maps similar to Black Ops 1, but I just think we need more diversity and they need to be different i think we need something that's more bare bones and easy to learn but with a lot of innovative feet that makes sense like keep the zombies formula that makes it good but give us new stuff that's also cool but i feel like it's asking for a lot because that's not an easy but to follow <laughs> yeah i guess we'll see man like i i understand like a lot of people want it to be you know basic mm -hmm. and you know back to the simple days and i think like there should just be an on off switch for easter egg like yeah honestly literally yeah. like start the game and before you pick like go into the game you can literally turn on or turn off easter egg because think about it this way for high round players all of the easter egg stuff is more entities that they have to fight against the clock yeah, it just for. gets in the way yeah like most high round players will like activate the easter egg song and do the easter egg and stuff because it removes the entities like you have mm -hmm. a certain amount of entities every like quarter of a second or whatever it is then it counts every entity on the map and that goes Freeze. against the total number and the time so take out those things that aren't needed you know it would make it better for a lot of people it really would man i just hope bo5 is good i'm expecting like an early 2020 really but I, I would be okay with that honestly so like just I. get next gen next gen consoles and then get the game when it comes out be ready for next gen take the more time you need because honestly next gen consoles coming out in the fall we'll have games to play to hold us over yeah true i i mean i pretty much only play cod so yeah but i don't know dude i like spider-man <laughs> well a lot of people have been talking about modern warfare 2 multiplayer remaster that'd be too. awesome that'd be a nice would, little pass I over like but it, to be honest it would not be as good as the original no it never can be like mwr was weird they just it can't, was you can't... good but it wasn't like as good it got boring yeah. quick remasters get boring quick that's just how it in my opinion for the most part. and that's the, it's the same exact thing with zombie maps too chronicles low-key got boring in a couple well, weeks i don't think anyone yeah. said that but no, like after I, two weeks everyone, everyone was done with it oh yeah <laughs> Like it was fun because I already we already knew the map. Yeah. You know, like if you've been playing zombies a lot, you know everything about the map already. Exactly. Which made it easy for pretty much every zombies YouTuber to make guides and stuff, because like I already knew how to build the staffs and everything like that. Yeah, the Chronicles burnout was probably one of the worst burnouts I've ever felt, where I was like, huh, what's next? Like that that's it. Yeah. But that's true. But it, it was nice regardless. It was like, awesome. It was, it was extra content and I was not complaining. And the community was just incredible at that point. Yeah. It was just, it was, it was good. It was definitely good. But uh, pretty much that's it for today's episode. You guys should totally go check out Greg's channel. He grinds super hard. He streams on Twitch. All that good stuff. One of the best creators in zombies right now. Do you have any final words? Well, <laughs> thank, thanks for the compliments. No but, problem. Uh, yeah, man. I hope Black House 5 is great for everyone that's waiting. And I... I mean, that's pretty much it. Use my code if you want to get G Fuel. Code, is it code Greg FPS? Is it just straight? Yeah. All right, code okay, Greg okay. FPS. If you guys enjoyed today's video, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Thank you for watching.